Have you ever wanted to connect to the internet without using Wi-Fi? This, uh, we're gonna go today over six solutions, this is five, six solutions to connect to the internet over using not Wi-Fi, over, <laughs> over using not Wi-Fi, anyways. And we're gonna be ranking them based on several factors. Now, these solutions, they, we're gonna be looking at the Mac and iDevices, like iPhone and iPod and iPad and stuff like that. Um, if you have non-Apple devices, uh, many of these solutions will work on those devices as well, but I can't, I'm used to Mac stuff, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. First, you may be asking, why might I want to not use Wi-Fi? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One could be that there's no Wi-Fi available in the area, which is often the case. Um, and the second one could be that... You know, there's all kinds of, like, studies and stuff. Some of you guys would have heard of this. Some of the studies say that, oh, Wi-Fi is really bad for your health and, like, cancer and stuff. And other studies are like, no, nah, it's fine. And uh, I don't know which studies are right. But if, if you want to avoid using Wi-Fi just in case, then we're going to go over six um, alternatives to Wi-Fi. We are going to be ranking these different ways of connecting to the Internet based on four qualifications. One is how much signal there is. In case the uh, the thing is that you want to get rid of signals, then we'll rank based on how much signal, and obviously less signal, wireless signal, is better in this ranking. Secondly, we'll rank by speed potential. Thirdly, we'll rank by usefulness, and we'll, uh, like, obviously all of these methods can connect to the full internet, but in terms of how practical it is to use a certain method, then we will be, uh, that'll hopefully come more clear as we're going. And for which devices does it work on, and how many devices and stuff like that, and as I said before, I'm looking at Apple products because that's what I'm familiar with. But a lot of these methods work on other devices as well, so you'll just have to look up your particular device and see if it works on that device as well. Number four, Bluetooth PAN. Now, you may be wondering, wait, why are you starting with number four? There's six of them. Well, why don't we do the better order? <laughs> Anyways, Bluetooth PAN is, as far as signal, it is it still has a signal, so if you're concerned about cutting signals, then it does still have a signal. Although, if you're looking at an iDevice, um, in all of my research, the only ways to get internet on these things are through signals, although I heard something about um, USB. I, th I think there's a new thing on the new iPhones where you can get USB internet, um, although if someone can confirm that, that would be great. But in any case, so signal, it is a very low signal, which is good, compared to Wi-Fi, like, Wi-Fi will work, like, quite a long ways away, whereas Bluetooth PAN is only, I think it has a limit of six feet or something, which means that the signal's a lot weaker, so it's, it's a lot better if you're concerned about that and want to still get internet on your, uh, device. Now, as far as speed, it is very slow. <laughs> it is very slow. It will work, it will even... If I remember right, it's been a long time since I used it, but if I remember right, it will even do YouTube videos. It's fast enough for that, although it won't do them in HD, it will do them in lower resolutions, so it is a trade-off. Weaker signal for slower, um, slower speed, so it depends. Um, usefulness. It requires a computer. Unless there's a way to set it up that I'm unaware of, but it requires a computer to actually send the Bluetooth signal, which the iPod or iPhone or iPad or whatever picks up. But it is very stable of a signal, as far as I've experienced. You um, simply, you pair your device up with the computer, and then you can get internet through there. This method as well, it works on iDevices, like iPad, iPod, are the ones I've tried it on. It probably also works on iPhone, because iPhone is usually just an upgraded version of an iPod Touch, iPod Touch. And it also works on Mac as well, although there's so many other ways to connect to the internet on Mac that Bluetooth PAN is probably not worth it due to the still having a signal and being slow. Some of you guys might be wondering, well, how do I set up Bluetooth PAN? Well, I don't know if I can show it on camera how to do it because of software licensing and stuff. I don't know enough about that. But in any case, basically what you have to do is if you're using a Mac, I don't know if there's a way on Windows or whatever, but if you're using a Mac, go in your system preferences, in your sharing preferences, turn on internet sharing and share it from whatever your internet connection device is, whether it's Ethernet or what, and share it out to Bluetooth, turn on your Bluetooth, and then connect, pair up your device, 
and connect it and you've got internet and that is the way it's supposed to work. There comes up in the corner, there's a little like linking, like a chain link item that is um, that is basically how it works. At least in this version, uh, that's what the chain link icon and stuff. I haven't used any of the newer iOS's since iOS 9 just because I don't have a device for it, but in any case. Number three, Firewire. Firewire is obviously a wire. So it has no signal strength as far as wireless signals and stuff. For speed, it is practically the fastest you can get. This is a Firewire 800 cable, and it is a matter of, in its, uh, there's different revisions of it. One of them can handle 800 megabytes or bits, one of the two, per second. The other can handle 400. Either way, that is more than enough for anyone's uh, internet needs, pretty much anyone, because the average internet connection is uh, fairly slow compared to that. So this will, as far as speed, there is no real uh, limit to it. And if, basically how it works is you go and on this laptop in particular, you plug it in over here and there's a pl uh, <laughs> plug and port as the same word, that is a, a thing, but anyways, so it goes right there, and then it takes your computer's internet connection from whatever. It's not just designed as an internet cable, it's designed as an all kinds of things cable, but we can use it for internet. As far as the usefulness of this particular cable, it has to come through a computer, the internet connection, through internet sharing, so it requires a computer. It requires a computer with a FireWire connection. And as far as I was reading, FireWire is a Mac thing, so I guess it wouldn't show up on PC but it also is only on older Macs. The, um, the newer Macs don't seem to have any FireWire anymore, but if you have an older Mac that has FireWire connection, then that's a good way to turn on internet sharing as we uh, discre de discussed or described one of the two, but both words can't be in the same word um, before, <laughs> as we described before. And so the ranking of this thing overall is... Number six, cellular data. Cellular data is a much stronger signal than Wi-Fi, so if that is your point, is to get rid of Wi-Fi, then you probably don't want cellular data. But if the problem is just that you don't have any Wi-Fi, it might be a good option. Cellular data, the signal strength is really high. Um, speed is ultra fast. I don't know exactly the numbers because I never researched it, but they keep talking about cellular... Cell, Cellular data, there we go. Cellular data as being like super fast and like LTE and all kinds of stuff like that. Usefulness requires a cellular data plan, which costs a lot of money. You have to keep paying per month, stuff like that. It's in addition to your regular internet connection at home, so it, uh, it's a whole lot of money. Which devices does it work on? It works on iPhone, some iPads, depending on your iPad model, and that's that. So the final score of cellular data is... Number two, Thunderbolt Bridge. Thunderbolt Bridge is a wired connection, so it has a signal of nothing as far as wireless signals go. The speed is fast, very fast. It is like just, well, you've heard of Thunderbolt probably. Thunderbolt is the original version of it was like 10 gigabits, gigabytes, gigabits, one of the two per second. And now they've got Thunderbolt 3, which is 40 gigabytes per second. And I don't know if Thunderbolt 3, I've not used it really much, so I don't know if it will do Thunderbolt Bridge, but this particular Mac has Thunderbolt, I just looked it up, I think it's Thunderbolt 1, if, uh, if I read that right. Thunderbolt 1 over here, as you can see past the USB hub, this is a Thunderbolt port. To see it more clearly, let's take a look at this. This is a, I don't have, I don't actually have a Thunderbolt cable, but this is a VGA adapter to Thunderbolt. And this is basically what it looks like is this thing over here. And it basically, if you have one Mac connected to the internet, you can, through internet sharing once again, you can share that internet connection from that Mac to the other Mac with Thunderbolt and get a Thunderbolt bridge that way through the Thunderbolt cable. As far as usefulness, it of course it requires that computer to do the internet sharing, but it also depends whether it's worth it on if you have enough Thunderbolt ports for it. So this particular computer, I've never used Thunderbolt Bridge, 
Um, the main reason why is, well, one thing, I don't have a cable. I don't have a Thunderbolt 3 cable, or Thunderbolt 1 cable. And the second reason why I've never used it, never bothered to buy a Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 1 <laughs> cable, again, getting those two confused. But the reason I've never bothered to buy a Thunderbolt 3 cable is because I only have one Thunderbolt port, and that is used for displays, as you saw, the VGA adapter to Thunderbolt and stuff. And so if you have only one port, although a lot of Macs have, like, Throughout the different models that they've come out with, they have two ports, or they have different things like that, and so it might be worth it if you're looking for an extra add-on internet connection to your computer. And one thing to note as well, I don't think I said this about internet sharing, is that it really, as far as I know, I've, I've used it a lot and I've not noticed anything like this, it basically, it just is like a pass-through. So the computer over here that is having the internet come through it to the other computer, it can't read what's going through the internet, as far as I know. So it's just, it's essentially as if this computer has a direct connection to the internet, it just happens to go through this computer to get there. So that is essentially how it works. There have been, I've noticed a couple of difficulties, although our modem is faulty as well, so I don't know if that could be what caused it, but a couple of difficulties with the internet sharing is that the computer over here, often if you're trying to access files on other computers on your local network, um, it hasn't, for us, it doesn't always get through, and then we have to plug it in a direct connection um, instead of going through the uh, the one computer over there. So it really depends. There's it, there's a couple of things. But as I said, that could just be our modem. It might not have actually been the um, it sharing connection part of it, so it depends. But it's good for most things. It's good for regular access to, to the internet, stuff like that. What devices does this work on? Well, Thunderbolt Bridge, it works on a Mac. <laughs> It doesn't work on iPhone and stuff like that because they don't have Thunderbolt connections. And it only works on Macs that have a Thunderbolt port. It works on Thunderbolt 1. It would work on Thunderbolt 2, I'm guessing, as well because that's the same connector, so it probably has the same thing. Thunderbolt 3, I'm guessing it works as well. I've not heard anything to the contrary, which means that it should work on pretty much any modern Mac since this particular Mac is from 2012, so any modern Mac since then. So the final score of Thunderbolt Bridge is... Number five, sharing to Wi-Fi. Now, if your issue is you want to get rid of Wi-Fi, this won't help. But if your issue is just that there's no Wi-Fi available in your area, if your computer has internet connection, has an internet connection, include the uh, proper English there, that would be helpful. But anyways, if your computer has an internet connection, you can use this internet sharing technique, go in your system preferences and your sharing preferences, and turn on sharing, you can share to Wi-Fi, you can set up a wireless network, you can choose between, we use this all the time, like on on occasion, you know, turn it on. You, normally we have our Wi-Fi off, but if we ever need it, because you can only use wireless to connect to the, uh, to the iPods, but if ever we need it, we turn on Wi-Fi sharing, and it's a matter of you can share on the 2.4 gigahertz band or the 5 gigahertz band, and you can secure it, password protection, all that kind of stuff, like you would with a regular Wi-Fi network, except it's coming off of your computer. So it can actually, in some ways, be better because it can be a weaker signal than your home router. So in terms of if you're concerned about health and stuff like that, then a weaker signal is better than a non-weaker signal, so it can be a better way to do it. Also, it saves the money if you want to buy an iDevice and you don't want to spend the money on a whole Wi-Fi router. If you don't have one, if you have a computer, it might work. And the speed is really fast. It's like as fast as your regular internet connection. Usefulness. It requires a computer to send the signal from and it requires that that computer has a pre-existing internet connection. Which devices does this work on? This works on actually any, uh, <laughs> any Apple device I've tried, whether it's iPhone or iPad or iPod or Mac or whatever, you can, uh, it's like, basically it's just a regular Wi-Fi network. It's just coming from the Mac instead of from other devices, so pretty much any device you want can connect to it. It even works, like, I have I can confirm that it works on other things like Samsung phones and other kinds of phones because it's just a regular Wi-Fi network. So the final score of Wi-Fi sharing is... Number one, Ethernet. Ethernet. The signal strength is none, because it's a wire, it's not wireless. And let's get a, into a little bit about how Ethernet works. Ethernet, I would say, is actually the best way to connect to computers and stuff like that. It 
only works on computers, doesn't work on the mobile devices like iPhones and stuff. But Ethernet is this thing here, if you can sort of see that, it's kind of really dark down there. Let's try to get this thing closer. But that is an Ethernet cable, basically how Ethernet works. The internet comes into your house and your modem, and then from there, depending on the way you have it set up, it goes to your router, and then from the router, it can go to Wi-Fi, and it can also go to Ethernet. Ethernet is very stable of a connection because it is wired. So what we have here in this particular setup, we have a router downstairs which sends the Ethernet out to all kinds of wires and stuff. One of those wires goes to a switch, and then that switch has another wire connected to it which sends all the way upstairs, and then that wire comes to over here, if you can see that back there. There we go. That down there is an Ethernet switch. And what it does is it's less than a router. Basically, all it does is it switches the connection. I'm not sure exactly the differences, but maybe if someone can uh, can enlighten me on that issue and enlighten the rest of us on that issue. Basically, this wire comes up from the router downstairs, and then it comes into this switch. And this switch is basically all it does is it splits the connection so you can get multiple devices connected to one Thing. So we've got there, this is the laptop, this is the desktop, and this is for some random device, whatever we need to connect to it in this room over here. And Ethernet, because it's wired, it has a very stable connection. So, for example, if you're having trouble with Wi-Fi is always, like, sometimes it's good speed, sometimes it's not good speed, and it depends, and if you move around the house, it's different speeds, or if wherever you happen to be, it's a slower speed or whatever. The cable, it's either connected or it's not. And when it's connected, you got super fast speeds, whatever your internet connection is, because the actual ethernet is capable of, well, the standard ethernet is gigabit, which I would assume means one gigabit of data per second, and the standard internet connection is way below that. <laughs> so it will handle your ethernet, your internet capability, uh, requirements, not capabilities. It has the capability to handle your requirements of, there we go, that is the proper English. But anyways, Ethernet, that's what I use all of the time. It is very stable because Wi-Fi, you can get interference with the signal, you can get, if you're too far away, you can get a weak signal, but the cable, it's like connected and it's solid. And the only issue with it is sometimes the end of the cable here, it, let's bring it closer, it can be very cheaply made often. And so this clip here, which is what actually connects it to, like, um, the, the connections are in this thing here, but this clip sort of holds it in place in the computer. And that clip is plastic, and it often breaks and stuff like that, and we have loads of trouble with that. That's the only drawback of it. If you're able to find any with uh, metal clips or something, I've never heard of such a thing, but that would be very solid as far as not breaking the clip. But even when the clip is broken, it still, if you just set it in there, it still holds really well, and it just stays there, and you're good to go, and solid connection, no speed, no slowdowns, there wouldn't be any speed ups, I was going to say no speed ups, but <laughs> no slowdowns, no nothing, it always goes the speed you want, which is excellent. There's another related issue with Ethernet, which is if, this is mostly, like, both of these issues are if you're using it in a laptop, in a desktop, you wouldn't have any of these issues, because it wouldn't wear out, you just sort of plug it into the desktop, and just leave it like that for a long time. But if you're using it in a laptop like we tend to do, it um, it tends to, the clip tends to break, yes, but also around here, around next to, let's just try to see where you can see it, um, next to the plug, it if you bend it too much, then over the course of several months, it ends up getting, starting to break and stuff, and then it starts to get a bad connection and stuff, and uh, looks broken, like the casing is uh, broken on it, stuff like that. So, like, it does wear out over time if you keep bending it too much and bending the clip and stuff like that. In a desktop, you wouldn't have either of these issues. Um, at least we haven't had either of those issues from our desktops, but um, on laptops, you're more likely to have issues such as those. As far as usefulness, it does not require a computer to, um, well, <laughs> to use it, it does, but not to send the signal, whereas, like, what we were talking about with, uh, with internet sharing, it requires a computer to actually connect to the other computer that you're looking for as a pass-through. Ethernet is just, it comes right from your router and goes off like that. You can use a switch if you would like to have extra connections. Pretty much any device that has an Ethernet connection capability can connect to it. You don't require a computer to go through. It goes right directly to the router. 
and it even works on the more modern Macs that have, like, for example, the MacBook Pros that have four, um, like, two or four USB-C, or, like, Thunderbolt 3 connections. You can actually get, we've actually used one of those, a connection that converts a USB-C into Ethernet, and so you can get an Ethernet connection even on the newer MacBook Pros. But Ethernet tends to come standard with all the desktops, not necessarily the laptops, although there's ways around that, as I just talked about. Ethernet doesn't work on phones, as far as I'm aware, and if you guys happen to know if there's a way to get Ethernet on an iPhone or like an iPod or something like that, then let me know, because I've been looking for that for a long time and I've not found anything. So, but that would be awesome if you guys could, if you guys knew of any ways to do that. But in any case, hopefully this video was helpful to some of you guys, giving you all kinds of ideas and stuff like that for how to connect to the internet, things that you may not have been aware of before. As I said, I don't know how many of these things work on PC or how you'd even set them up, stuff like that, because I've never used a PC before as of the time of uh, recording this video. So that's something to be aware of, but that's, uh, that's how they work on Mac and on uh, iDevices and stuff like that. And so hopefully this was helpful and all that kind of stuff. And let me know if you have any comments or thoughts or suggestions or whatever. And see you guys later.